Hello people. I just got an interesting package today from individual computers. It can only be Commodore 64 reloaded. So I'm going to do a little unboxing video. This is my first unboxing video I have ever made. So if I don't follow certain norms or standards, excuse me. Okay, so far so good. Let's get the corners here as well. So, alright. This is probably power supply. It had to be less than 100 something ripple, which is some kind of noise. And uh, he sold this specifically for this board, so I trust that it meets it meets that specification. So that's nice. And all right, let's get this out of the way. Okay. Some welcome, welcome note, reference stuff. Definitely gonna read that. And the goodie, the goodie. I ordered it with the the CPU because uh, I didn't have a. Well, I do have a few Commodore 64s with. I don't use that much, but uh, the CPUs are soldered to the motherboard on them, so that would be a mess. So PLA, and we have here the uh, graphics chip. So that's nice. Um, and something there. And uh, I have plenty of sets myself. I'm a big fan of the 6581. That has the correct sound from my childhood. So, except for a few demos and stuff, which sounds better than the, on the on the newer chip, the 8580. But uh, all right, Let's see what we have here. 12 volt, 12 volt power supply, the power switch, which looks like the original one. It has a neat feature. Down is off, and uh, this is on, and that's the middle position. It has three positions. It's an up position, which is reset. So that's pretty neat. It has a um, three and a half millimeter standard mini jack out for sound and super video out, and. Along with that, it has, of course, the the original video port, and uh, it's other than that, it's pretty much a standard Commodore 64 board. Um, well, you can uh, easily switch out the set chips. You can just move some jumpers around, and you can fi configure it, and you can do that as well with the NTSC and PAL on um, VIC chips. We'll have to have a, a specific NTSC rig chip if you want that. So, and it can do some other stuff with the with the ROMs that I am not gonna use. You can switch between ROMs. It's not really my area to do that. I might look into it later, but uh, yeah. And what else? What else do we have? There was something else I was going to mention. And uh, the VSP fix right there. Um, that is uh, at some point in time some seniors 
invented or uh, stumbled upon some kind of uh, some kind of bug, and uh, which they exploited to do some kind of effects. Um, and uh, well, that's all well and good, but uh, it appeared that some Commodore 64s did not support that. Maybe some of them didn't have the bug. I don't know exactly what happened, but some Commodore 64s crashed when running some software which exploited that bug. So. This board should be immune to that, so that's nice. Okay, and now it's time to install and replace a chip. So I'm gonna start with the uh, with the SID chip, and uh, I have extracted a SID chip from one of my other Commodore 64s. This is an 8580 revision five. And these sift sockets are very easy. Just release it, pull the lever up, let the chip drop down here, and it's whoops, sorry. And you can see it's very loose here. It's very nice. So it's about the middle right there. And then you just take pull the lever down. And that's it. It's in place. That's very nice. Now, the big chip, the graphics chip. I have another one, another one I want to put in, so this one came with the board, I'm going to take that out. And I have one here, I want to put in instead. It is the exact same chip, the exact same, well, not the exact same, but the same version and revision. It's in 8565. The reason I want to put this in is naturally because it has a heat sink on it already. So. Might as well do that. And it's the same procedure. Press it down and it's it's in place. That's nice. Uh, the machine I took it from was this one. This is in the board 25469. Um, this would have been nice to put in. That is it would be instead of this one. Is the CPU or MPU as some call it. This is the 6510. This one is a newer one, an 8500. I think it's the manufacturing process that is the difference. Other than that, it's, it's doing the same thing. So that's it. I have to. I have a heatsink I want to throw on here. Because, uh, well, might as well. I think it gets a little hot. So, so that's it. Oh, the PLA. I can show the PLA here. This is Super PLA version 3, also made by individual computers. They can be configured to with these jumpers down here to be used in other machines uh, than the Commodore 64. Like, I think Commodore 16 and VIC-20 and don't quote me on that. Some other machines, anyway. So, so that's pretty nice. There we go. So, I'm not gonna put a heatsink on this one right now because it has to. The epoxy has to settle for some hours. I I do it for a whole day just to be sure. So, I wanna I wanna try it first. So, so that's it. Okay. Time to put it in a housing. I'm gonna put it in this, this one, and excuse me for a minute. And the top half, keyboard. So, not gonna need that right now. Now first, I'm gonna take out this motherboard. Screw in place, this is the wrong screwdriver. Ah, damn it. Okay. <clears throat> right. Excuse me. This one should fit better. Right. It's 
not a, more than a few weeks ago I actually had this one apart and I cleaned it a little bit so it's it's pretty clean already so but since I'm gonna install this in a bread box sorry I'm gonna need to install that metal bracket this one or there's just gonna be a huge gaping hole here on the side where the power and the joystick ports are. So, I'm going to install that on the reloaded board. And the whole main has some screws in it. I'm going to remove these screws first. I put them in there so I didn't lose them. <laughs> One screw. And, come on. Oh, God. This one should fit nicely. So it just goes over here. From the port here. Oh, that's a sticker. I oh, well, might move that soon. So it's just gonna be here. So you just put in the screws. Where is that damn hole here? Yeah, I got the hole. on there pretty good so the bottom half of the case here and see oh as you can see here this little daughter board is uh, is lifted up now it might look a little too but um, there's a reason and I'll show you the reason yeah most of you know the reason but Put in a couple of screws just to hold it in place. Top right and bottom left. Oh, that fits nicely. The reason it's it's lifted. It's because the Super VHS port and the uh, the sound port are occupied by the old. This is the old antenna port, and this was some channel selecting thing, high and low channel, and I never used that, not even when I was a kid. But I guess that was to be used for some television sets. So, gonna put in the rest of the screws now. There is of course a little hole here because the new power plug is much smaller. So yeah. All right. The keyboard, the power plug. The power plug. I am not too sure how to how that is supposed to go in, but I'm gonna do it with the. I'm gonna turn it this way. Let's see if there is a light when it when I turn it on, then it was uh, connected the way it should be. Otherwise, I have to flip it. Right, the keyboard goes here. That's it. some heat sinks here. Gotta move it a little bit. Okay. 
There we go. Well, that sounds nice. <laughs> Okay, and the screws for this one. Maybe I should have put in the screws now if the power thing is is not right. But, uh, okay. Well, it seems to. I don't know. This case has always been a little obscure. <laughs> <clears throat> but, oh well, excuse me. So, moment of truth. Okay, a couple of minor things. Um, like this super video port right there. As you can see, I had to chip away some there. I had to chip away a little piece of plastic, otherwise there was not any room for this plug. So, and another thing, I have the 1541 Ultimate, I use it all the time, and uh, right here, behind that cable, that is the mini jack audio out from the reloaded board. That is blocked by the serial cable from the ultimate cartridge so if I want to use that I I guess I'm gonna have to buy an angled adapter so yeah but uh, that's minor stuff here I try to capture the differences uh, the quality difference between uh, the reloaded and a normal machine um, here what you're looking at here is from the normal machine. Uh, there is some rolling interference there. I have no idea where that comes from. It's not usually there, so I don't know. Disregard that. And um, here, this is the same screen with the super video out from the reloaded board. That's quite an improvement. And. Here is the little zoom picture. This again is from the old machine. And here we have it from the new machine. Uh, that is from the it's it the new machine is always from the super video out port. And one more note, um, my TV does not accept super video signals, so I convert the super video to to the composite. Okay, I have uh, I've hooked it up and I've been running it for quite a while now, and uh, it runs very good. Well, as expected, of course. But uh, well, no, but actually, the sixty-five ten is not even hot. It's lukewarm, so I'm not gonna bother with a cooler on that one, or, I mean, a heat sink. It's not necessary, so um, I'm very happy. So, thank you, Jens. <laughs>